What's going on y'all and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today we're going to cover the latest Ice Soul Weaver limited unit Amid for our Honest Review series. So we'll cover the skill enhancements, stat builds, alternative stat builds, artifacts, play styles, all the stuff you need to know. And at the end, break down whether or not you should pull and what I think about this new unit. What I might say or what I'm going to say might surprise some of y'all. Uh, just stay tuned. So without further ado. Let's get into it. Real quick, guys, if you already decided to summon for a mid before watching this, let me know how your summons went. Just like Lone Crescent Bologna, uh, I didn't one tap or anything, but I dodged pity. I got both her and the artifact in about 70 pulls, so definitely can't complain. And um, at the end, I'll talk about I might want to pull a few more copies here and there. But let's go ahead and break it down, guys. This is the stat line I decided to rock. Um, I actually think in some of the footage today, I even started with worse gear, but. Um, Guys, just like the Lone Crescent Bologna video, I think I need to start putting some better gear on because some of y'all aren't believing, right, that I, you know, in Epic 7 right now, it seems like a lot of units need more and more gear. And so I wanted to try and show units with just stuff I could slap on without stealing too much from my better units or units I'm already using and just kind of give them what I had lying around. But unfortunately, I think for these honest reviews, a lot of people think I need to put some amazing gear on. Not saying this is amazing. This is still not like the best, but I threw on some better gear here. Let's break it down. Just telling y'all for the footage y'all might see, you can get away with a lot less. We'll talk about all the stat gearing for your own style in just a second. But here, I decided on just enough bulk. The speed here, boys, not too important, okay? That's for my own style. Um, if you are a contester or aggressive player, you're going to want to get that speed number up and you might have to sacrifice some stats here and there, but just like a typical soul weaver, let's stack a ton of defense and health speed is nice work. Cause she is a tempo oriented soul weaver without two, without any direct sustain and, uh, effect resist is important. We'll cover that here in just a bit. So try to bump that number up too. just full transparency guys with guardian ice crystals, uh, with 15% here. And if you notice in some of the gameplay that I'll be showing y'all, I have always some like imprints for my knights artifacts and a lot of times 90% of the time I'm running like her alongside a maid Chloe which gives a lot of passive effect resist too so you guys might want more depending on what you're going to be doing so overall uh, classic soul weaver stat line where some of y'all are going to want to pump that speed up big big time depending on how fast and aggressive if you're trying to take that first turn we'll we'll yeah we'll go into that in just a sec so here's the stats guys um speed obviously a no-brainer with effectors this is what i chose i think that's going to be safe for most y'all watching no matter if you're standard tanky aggressive cleaver whatever it might be um i have seen some for the tanky boys out there that are watching i've seen some people already testing like celestine with counter set i don't know if it's amazing for Ahmed. i think if we're going to try something like that there's better soul views out there but who knows it's only day one just keep that in mind if y'all are banshee gamers out there uh, let's go ahead and talk about the skills real fast. Not too much to talk about here as we all remember her first impression, right? From the Smile Gate video, maybe I'll watch my first impression video. But skill one, Zephyr, we'll talk about the skill enhancements too. Uh, combat readiness, which we can soul burn to increase the whole squad's combat readiness. This is very nice with high speed. If you guys are on a high speed build, every time she skill ones, she just cycles super, super quick combined with her uh, crazy speed. And then if we ever need to, right? By the, you know, after the skill two, skill three, other units going, we're going to have those 10 souls on deck ready to go. And sometimes that whole team wide CR push is very important. So I would really recommend, guys, I think Amit is a, uh, unfortunately, a plus 13 kind of unit. Um, because this combat readiness, 15% total, is pretty important. If you guys really got to skip, you could probably skip this plus 5. Try to get the plus 3 because it's cheap. But let's move on to the next skill here. We got Forest Blessing to skill 2. Grant skill nullifier once to all allies. Increases combat readiness by 25%. Then we get that extra turn. Boys, this skill 2, extra turn into the skill 3 is so powerful. It's so powerful, I'm kind of sick of Smilegate bringing out units like this. Now, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer. I'm not raining on anyone's parade. If y'all are loving the heck out of a mid, I totally get it. But I just think these units are so strong. Like, it's watch the animation now, literally, because every unit now has extra turns. We got Lua, now we got a mid. There's just so many units that just give so much value by pressing that skill 2, skill 3. You got to sit there and watch it. Um, so... You, you need to be using Ahmed on yourself. Otherwise, you're going to be watching her take those extra turns. Grant skill nullifier. Increase the whole team-wide CR push. Put that swift attack on with attack up as well. It's absolutely crazy. But, yeah, we all know what it does here. So, skill enhancement-wise, make sure you all get that skill enhance. Uh, minus one turn cooldown. As in a lot of my games, right, I was casting this two, three times. We want that extra combat readiness push to get that max 25%. And I would really recommend guys getting plus five here as well. But if you got to skip, you know, cut out some from the skill one. Um, that's it in a nutshell for the skills. Let me go get a little more personal and talk about my findings with her. So I mentioned at the start of the video that what I found with Amid might surprise some of y'all. And what I meant by that was that she worked so well for me, guys. So much better than I thought she would. 
Now, obviously, she's a strong unit. I don't think anyone really... There were some jokes about Ahmed being mid, but I think we all thought she was going to be very, very good, especially for the faster, aggressive, maybe even Cleaver-style players out there, right? You combo her with a Kisei, as they were showing in the showcase, a Ludwig, whatever it might be, and you just blow up your opponent before they can react with that swift attack, combat readiness, attack up, all that good stuff, right? But she worked so well for me, guys. Even as a standard, slower, tanky, bruiser-style player, I think she has a lot of potential there. I mentioned Banshee players. You might want to, you know, some people are testing with counter sets. I'm just running this kind of uh, all-rounder set here, not going for mega fast speeds. But in my kind of setup where I have a lot of other supports and maybe like two carry DPS and all the sort of units, all the sort of styles, team comps, and... Um, Different teams I was bringing on mid worked out well in almost all of them, especially with units like Landy. Um, any DPS that was like solo, if they banned out my other DPS, she would really both protect, bring a ton of tempo, and she just never felt like... Um, she never felt bad. She always felt like she was doing her job wonderfully, and a lot of times I think she even carried the matches. So overall, super surprised that she worked for um, my own style, and I think she has a lot of potential there, guys. I kind of hinted that I might want to pull additional copies, and that's why, because if I compare her to a unit like Amelia, this is why I didn't think I was just going to like her, guys, is because she seems like a faster, um, more tempo-oriented Amelia, right? More aggressive. Amelia has bigger heals, uh, additional cleanses on the skill 3, but Amid has more overall CR, especially for the team and not just a single unit, as well as that skill nullifier, and I think Amid... Definitely, she might even be something I reach for even over a million now, especially if I'm bringing another sustain unit. Having, you know, one dedicated Soul Eaver and then a mid as kind of that uh, more tempo push units just take a lot of turns here. I think I really like that style as having that kind of unit. We'll see where that ends up. Just remember, guys, my standard slower players, don't write her off just yet. I'll wrap that up at my end thoughts, um, whether or not you should pull. Um, we'll cover all that at the end. Okay, so real quickly before we talk about the artifacts and then wrap it up all at the end nice and neatly with whether or not you should summon her, my overall thoughts. Just to recap the stats and what we've been talking about, guys, figure out the speed you want her for or the speed you want her at depending on your style. So if you're more standard like me, just figure out where you're at in real-time arena or whatever PvP mode you're doing. For me, usually I'm fighting, you know, Emperor-ish players. Um, 277 is broken fine. I'm not trying to take first turn necessarily. If I did... Um, Great. If I didn't, you know, having effect resist plus 277 speed means sometimes I get to resist a, a conquer Lily's provoke and then get my team above her team, possibly kill a unit and the or at least just interrupt their game plan. It worked out pretty nicely here, but I don't think it's too important if you're more standard ish. My aggro first turn cleavers out there, you guys are want to pump up that speed big time, which maybe could be a gearing hurdle for some of y'all out there. Don't don't get fr too frustrated on that. Um, just try to get as much speed as you can for wherever you're at in the game. Remember, all the stat lines are always relative to where you're at. And I'm really probably in future videos going to start cracking down on trying to get away with less gear because I've been seeing a lot of comments on just... Gearing is tough in Epic 7, guys, and I think when we focus on how much gear all these units need, people get discouraged, disheartened, and a lot of people are thinking you need more stats than you actually do, so we'll see. But yeah, overall, with stat-wise, find out your speed, and then just adjust to where you're at. Don't neglect the defense and health, and I think for my tankier players, standard players, I think everybody wants effect resist, period, but you know, just make sure it's all on point. Pretty much classic soul of your stats, um, and then speed to taste. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the artifacts real quick. So, some of y'all might be wondering why I'm running Guardian Ice Crystals over her own artifact, the Fan of Light and Dark, I believe it's called. The main reason was, uh, for me, I thought, you know, as a, as a tankier standard player, I wanted the additional effect resist, like I mentioned at the start of the video, as well as a little bit of sustain out of turn. I think this artifact is actually just busted, so I'm really hoping those of you that missed out on it, that ReZero comes back this year, as well as Slime, the Slime collab, could be around the corner, guys. Hoochie Shop was here. Now we have limited units. Small game might be trying to lower our bookmarks and get that collab running, but we'll see. That's all speculation. If you watch my collab tier list, we were talking about that a little bit. Um, but yeah, the main reason is I wasn't one. I think this uh, suits my style a little bit better as I didn't need the extra crit damage from her own artifact. But let's go ahead and talk about the other reason real fast. I'll bring it up here. And that's just because I also mentioned I only pulled one copy of mid and one copy of her artifact. And if you only have one copy here, right, guys, um, I believe it's 70 percent chance at max limit break, which means half of that's going to be what, guys, 55 Something like that, or mid 52.5, something like that, guys. Um, which means there's going to be some RNG element. If you can't, if you're not wailing out, if you didn't max limit break this already, you know, there's going to be some chances where you don't get that additional proc, which, depending on how you guys play, may not be a deal breaker. I do think this artifact is very good, especially for those of you that play more aggressive. 
Um, and speaking of guys, let me know in the comments below. I think Amid right now is the only one that can really make great use of it. Maybe Desert Drill Bazaar. If y'all have found anyone else, any other Soul Weavers, um, let me know if you guys have been experimenting with this. Um, but I do think it's great for her. It's just I didn't have extra copies. I didn't like the RNG element, especially when I'm not, you know, at plus 30, which is tough. Um, but overall, guys, let's go ahead and now talk about Amid. Break it all down and tell you guys the honest review recap. So what is the honest review of Amid? Is she worth your hard-earned bookmarks? Heck yeah, guys. Even if she didn't fit my style, I think the fact that she's limited means if you guys play PvP or want to play RTA in the future, if you're not just playing more casually, you probably want to pick up all limiteds that you can. And Amid definitely has the um, skills and, you know, just... She has the kit to back that up. So even if she wasn't limited, I would still recommend her. But the fact that she's limited too means almost all of you watching, um, as long as you're not mega casual plus free to play, I think you should look into getting her as she seems to fit across multiple styles. So many people are just testing different types of builds. Even my fellow tankier players and obviously the speedier players are having the time of their life with her. I can't, I, I'm going to be dreading fighting her uh, during the real season. But overall, yeah, the fact that she's limited plus the fact that she, her kit is very, very strong as well means I think she is as close to a must pull as can be because of the limited factor. So try to pick up guys if you're on the fence. If you still don't think she's going to fit your style, maybe you have Amelia or other Soul Weavers that you like better. If you're tankier, you just want you know units that can actually heal. Then just pick up one copy just in case you want to play aggressive later, guys. Or maybe she'll fit your style like she kind of did for me. Um, pick up one copy of her and the artifact if you can, right? Remember, you can get it with powder as well. Try not to break the bank just in case collab is around the corner, but definitely try to get one copy of each so you don't regret it. If you do think she fits your style, if you're aggressive, guys, faster players, definitely pick up a copy, maybe even go for an imprint. And yeah, that's really as simple as it is. Extremely strong skill kit. Super easy to use. You spam that skill two, skill three. Sometimes you see her push your team. You always see her pushing yourself. She provides some insane tempo and support. I think this unit is very, very, very strong, and we're only breaking the surface right now. So that's my overall thoughts, guys. Amid looks great, plays great. Arya's still better, but man, Amid, I was writing her off as uh, you know just a little sister, but I'm very, very surprised, very happy with the results. Good luck on your pulls, guys. Let me know if you find any other units for Fan of Light and Dark. And thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out, everybody.